What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode in the Lake Powell How To series. This time we're going to go over some of the online resources that we like to utilize uh, each year and before each trip uh, down to Lake Powell. Now the first one we want to go over is the old wayneswords.com. Now this isn't the current format and the current site but what you can still get from this site is you can get the old fishing reports and all the archived anglers corners. Now if you go down to the bottom left right here you can see archived fish reports and archived anglers corners. We're going to go into the archive fish reports first. And Wayne has been gracious enough to post and archive all of his fishing reports from each year dating back all the way through, I think it's, yeah, 96. So you can go to March 15th of 1996, and Wayne's going to show you the lake elevation, he's going to show you the water temperature. He's going to show you the report for the entire lake. And you can do that through any year that you might need. And you can see, again, you can see water temperatures, you can see lake elevation, you can see what was working, what wasn't, and just the, how things have changed. Okay, so next we're going to go to the archived angler's corners. And the angler corners are awesome. They are old reports from just everyday fishermen that, that went down and, and shared how successful they were, how unsuccessful they were, where they went, and how they did. So Wayne has it divided up into different sections of the lake, and you can go to the section of the lake that you're going to. You can click on a certain year. And you can go to that year and just glean a ton of information off of old people's people's old fishing reports and it's just an invaluable piece of information that you can use. If you need any information between now and 2010 you just go up here and you go to the regular anglers corner then you go down and see you can see ones that are just from last year and you can go to the display and you can just go ahead and display all of those and what's going to pop up is all the English corners that are between now and 2010. And so again, you can click on those and see how people did and just get a lot of good information. Then you can go over to fishing reports and you can do the exact same thing. So just like he did between 2010 and 1996, Wayne has cataloged all his excellent fishing reports between now and 2010. And each time he updates the water temperature, he updates the lake elevation, and then the, you know, the current fishing report. All right, so that was waynswords.com. Now we can look at waynswords.net. And what the .net is, is essentially the new message forum. Um, for reasons beyond me, the the old message forum wasn't compatible anymore and so they moved the message forum over to the .NET and they've done a really good job with it. And what you can do is you should you should sign up and be a member. You know, I mean you don't have to pay anything or anything like that. You just become part of a really great community of people who love Lake Powell. And you can come here and you can talk about fishing, you can talk about the bearings on your boat trailer, your RV trailer electrical in your RV or houseboat anything that you could think of you could come here and you could find an answer to uh, especially if you signed up and became a member you could come in here and ask which cordage you need for whatever type of battery you want to put uh, on your houseboat or solar panels or there's anything you could think of this is just a great and wonderful site uh, to be a part of and to and to utilize Alright, so if you go to the home section of the site, it'll show you all the different forums there are. There's announcements, a help desk, uh, different articles, there's an angler, there's the angler's corner uh, that's been moved over, there's the Wayne's fishing reports, there's fishing tips, 
there's a welcome mat and a Lake Powell fishing recreation issues and then a whole yard sale. You can come and buy and sell things on here as well. They also have other resources like hiking and uh, recipe tips. And then they have useful links for the water database, webcams, and things like weather. So it's just an awesome place to, to come and talk about Lake Powell and, and learn from people who you know love it just as much as we do and who have just countless years of combined experience um, boating, fishing, and enjoying Lake Powell. So definitely go and become a member of Wayne's Words. That's definitely what I would suggest. Another great site is the Lake Powell Water Database site. And you can come here and it's going to show you Lake Powell's current depth. It's going to show you Lake Powell's current elevation and the inflow and the outflow. Generally it shows you the, the water temps. And so what you can do on that is you can really utilize the angler's corner and the depths of the lake to your advantage. So you can come here and you can see what the current lake level is and then you can compare that to reports that are from similar lake elevations. Or you can come down here and you can get uh, data for up to 10 specific dates. So if you go and you read an angler's corner and you you know you check that date and everything you can come type that date in here and it'll give you the exact height of the lake. You can see launchable and accessibility of all the ramps on the Lake Powell Water Database site. And then you can also see current snowpack, current precipitation, and then it just gives you kind of a summary of the entire water year. So this is definitely a good site to utilize. It also has webcams. So if you're really obsessed with Lake Powell, you can come and you can check current webcams. You can see, well, it's getting dark down there. But you can see just exactly how Lake Powell's doing at that moment. So the Lake Powell Water Database site is another great and useful site to use for Lake Powell. All right, so next thing we're gonna look at is a couple of the wind and weather apps that are our favorite. The first one we utilize is WindFinder. And I've just got our, some of our favorites pulled up here. I'm gonna click on Page Airport slash Lake Powell. Oh, no, I'm not gonna click on that one. I'm gonna actually click on the Bullfrog Marina one because that's the one we usually go to. So it's gonna give you kind of the long range forecast it's Monday the 1st, so it's going to give us all the way into next Thursday. And some of the things you want to look for wind-wise when planning a trip, especially in the spring, is, well, first you want to look for kind of the best warming period. Um, so you want to try to plan your trip, you know, two or three days into a good warming period. And then as far as wind goes, at least for us, and obviously anything below 10 is, you know, you can't ask for anything better at Lake Powell. 10 to 15, you know, kind of gets annoying. 15 to 20, it's kind of, you know, definitely has your attention. And then once anything, especially for an extended period of time, gets over about 20 miles an hour, then we really start to and uh, maybe potentially replan the trip. So that's kind of what you want to look for. Um, keep an eye out. You want to try to be as flexible as you can. Um, but if you can't, you know, just definitely don't go down in anything extended like over 20 miles an hour, especially if you're inexperienced. Um, so that's kind of something to, to look for and watch out for. So we like WindFinder. I think it does a relatively good job and has a pretty extended forecast. You can click on each day and kind of see how each day is going. So we like WindFinder and then we also like... Alright, so the, the weather app that we pr 
probably like the most is, is Weather Underground. So I have the Lake Powell, Utah station pulled up. You can go down and you can kind of use this in correlation with, with the Wind Finder app. And Weather Underground is pretty good. It's got a pretty extended forecast as well. Um, you know, generally you don't want to trust anything past a week, but you can definitely see and notice patterns. What I like about Weather Underground, it kind of gives you kind of an almost an hour by hour uh, update on the wind speed and things like that. So I'm clicking on tomorrow, Tuesday, tomorrow, you can kind of see the peak of the wind is there at like 5 or 6 p.m. So I, you know, I kind of like that. So I like using this in tandem with, with Wind Finder. And again, you definitely want to look out for anything like over 20 miles an hour, especially for more than an afternoon. If you see that a couple days in a row, definitely probably want to try planning something else. Um, one thing you can do, um, kind of another little tip and trick weather wise when you're kind of trying to plan out a trip is you can you can look up kind of other areas that are around uh, Lake Powell. So one area we like to look up is kind of Hanksville. It's a little bit higher elevation. Um, another good one is like Blanding for the north. Um, you know you can look at probably St. George, uh, a few places like that in the south just kind of see kind of what the pattern is that's going to be coming in and then just a little bit different elevations elevations around the area you're wanting to go so you can kind of look at you know for us we can kind of look at Hanksville and kind of maybe get a little bit better idea of what might be hitting towards Bullfrog so that's that's kind of it as far as the kind of the internet resources that we like to use especially when we're planning on a trip uh, for you know, we're trying to get down next week, so we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on some of those weather patterns, like I talked about, and then we're obviously going to be looking at current water levels, and then any of the new recent reports, and then what you keep an eye on those, and you kind of just helps you ref again refine some of that info, and kind of make it more finite for you, and uh, hopefully makes you a little bit more successful. All right, so now that I got these kind of more boring-ish videos out of the way we can really start diving deeper into kind of the actual fishing parts and we'll get some rod reel line lures structure we'll get those videos going uh, for you and, and those will be a lot better probably a lot more entertaining all right thanks for watching again if you like the series make sure you guys like and subscribe please um, and thank you for watching and not too much longer until we actually get out and start catching some fish. Alright, thank you.